Alright, praise the Lord. I want you to turn with me this morning to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 we're going to start at. I titled my message this morning, if you looked at Facebook, sometimes the message will change and add to and different things, but I'm talking today about the harvest and that the harvest is plenteous. Amen? Amen. The harvest is not something that, that we can take lightly. God is looking for laborers yes. for the harvest. Now we'll get to that scripture in a moment. We're going to preach on this one. The Bible says, Now therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the things that thou hast heard among many witnesses. Yeah. The same commit thou to faithful men. Somebody just underlined that in the Bible. Faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore in your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. No man that warth entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. Now here we're told that we are to endure hardness mm -hmm. as a good soldier Amen. of Jesus Christ. Therefore, my Lord. uniform this morning is the reason why I'm wearing the outfit. I want to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you might think, well, I wouldn't wear it at the church. I don't care. You're not going to. It don't fit you in the first place. <laughs> in the second place, it belongs to me. So, we're talking about being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And before we're ever going to see a plenteous harvest, reap for the Lord, we're going to have to be good soldiers for Jesus Christ. Amen. See, we've got to endure hardness. Amen. Some of us quit when we face the first trial that comes our way. We just give up, throw up our hands and say, Where is God? I mean, I heard that so many times, it's getting old. God is in the same place He's always been. Amen. He's sitting high, looking low. He's looking for somebody to live a righteous life. He's looking for somebody to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. He's looking for men and women that will be good soldiers, that will allow themselves to live a disciplined, controlled life. Amen. 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 See, I know a little bit about being a soldier. Been there, done that. When you're a soldier, when he's talking about you can't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. Uh -huh. That's absolutely true. Yeah. When you get off that bus, wherever you're going to take basic training, everything you had, you got to let go of. Uh -huh. Now you belong to the government. Yep. Yep. You are U.S. military property. Amen. Amen. You know what GI means? Does anybody in this place know what GI means? It's government issued. Your life, amen, and everything that you have now belongs to them. They don't want you caught up in the affairs of the life you left behind. That's why we see many suicides uh, take place because people got dear job letters, amen. And, and they killed themselves because they lost their families. They lost uh, different things. And Jesus doesn't want you to lose your family. He wants you to gain your family. But what He wants you to do is lose your life uh, so that you can gain your life. Uh, the Word of God said if anybody tries to save his life, uh, he will lose his life. Glory to God. I know it sounds upside down, but it's right side up. Uh, you got to realize God is looking for some people that are going to say, hey, I'm willing and able to be a man or a woman of God. I'll endure the hardness. I'll take control of my life. I'll discipline myself. Amen. And I'll be that army that God wants in this last hour of time we live. 
Amen. See what we do, we get caught up in the affairs of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And many want to change God's word. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it doesn't really say this, it says that. No, it says exactly what it says. Yes. Amen. Our problem is we try to fit the word to ourselves instead of ourselves fitting the word. Uh -huh. Hello, right. you ain't yes. listening Amen. to me today. Amen. 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 I'm telling you the truth. Yes. We all want to be that soldier. That's going to be there that can endure the hardness of being a child of God. Amen. See, the disciples, they knew what hardness was. They were sawn asunder. They were speared to death. Come on, they were beheaded. Mm -hmm. They were turned upside down and crucified. Yeah. They had all types of horrible deaths. And nobody's going to give their life for something they know is not true. Right. But they walked and they talked with Jesus. They knew that He was resurrected. Amen. Amen. They knew that they were going to be part of that resurrection. Hallelujah. That same Spirit that lifted Jesus Christ up from the dead, He raised up. Amen. That same Spirit will one day quicken our mortal bodies. Can somebody say, God is looking for a people that will humble themselves and pray. Prayer is not easy. Let's don't kid one another. Prayer is not easy. You ever got down to pray all of a sudden the devil just trying to confuse you with everything and anything? Huh? You had that war. You have them blasting over the loudspeakers. Go home. You don't belong here. Go home. You're going to die here. They do that stuff. That's to intimidate you. The devil does the same thing. Amen. Stop praying. Stop giving. Stop living for God. Stop it. You don't belong in that church. Amen. That church is not for you. How many people have we seen come to this church and leave because they said, we just don't feel like we belong? Well, the reason you don't feel like you belong is because you're on the wrong side. Can somebody say amen? amen. I think we have a friendly church. Amen. A loving church. A church that helps the community as well as those that are amongst us. Amen. We have a church, amen, of believers. But we also have a church uh, where we need to get busy in the harvest. Oh. We need to get busy in the world. And to do that, we're going to have to endure hardness, folks. Uh, we're going to have to take the ridicule. Uh, we're going to have to take the persecution. Uh, we're going to have to defeat the devil every time he comes in uh, and tries to defeat us. Uh, God has given us armor. Armor is not given to people unless they're going to fight in battle. Uh, we have a helmet of salvation. We have the best breastplate of righteousness. Our laws are dirty in the gospel. Our feet are soft in the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, we take the shield of faith, wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery parts of the wicked. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the living God, can somebody say? It cuts coming and going. Yeah. And sometimes when it's cutting us, Brother Steve, we don't like that. Yeah. Oh, we don't like that. Amen. He just cut me. Yeah. I get cut up here preaching. Yes, hey, Amen. Myself sometimes. I'm getting cut. Mm -hmm. But I want to preach the truth. If it hits me, oh well. I need to straighten up that situation. I need to get busy being what God has called me to be and that's a soldier of Jesus Christ. Yeah. As a soldier, you protect one another. You have one another's back. That's right. You want to try to keep safe and make it home. When I was in Vietnam, I did my 12 months and they came out with a thing, well, if you do a little extension, when you come back to the States, you can get out. Ain't nobody want to extend in war, but I didn't want to extend in the military either. So 
So I said, I'll do that. I'll take that extra time in Vietnam so I can get out. When I come back to the stateside, I'll have less than six months. I can just get out of the Army. I don't want nothing to do with you folks. Amen. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm finished. That's like some of you. Amen. You extended a little bit, but oh, you're trying to get out. And you especially try to get out when it gets hot. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you something. You are over there, and at the last stretch of the way, we had a little saying, it was called short timer sickness. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, when you got short and you thought you were going to make it, a lot of guys died right before they came home. Mm. Oh, yeah. That bullet that you dodged for all that time hit you right at the moment you're ready to leave. It's a shame. So they started coming. I got one in the house. I should have brought it today. It's called the short timer stick. They gave it to Sergeant Walls, amen. I carried it for a while. It's a 50 caliber bullet stuck on a wooden stick with tassels on it. Short timer, amen. You get so sick sometimes you start throwing up, amen. Some of you get sick of being attacked by the devil. You get sick of waiting on the Lord, amen. But we need to wait patiently. There's a harvest, hallelujah, yeah. that we're going to be involved in reaping. A new season if we faint not. Stop passing out. Amen. You're getting short. You're a short timer. I believe that. In light of the word of God, Sister Kim, I believe we don't have much time. I believe that Jesus is ready to split that eastern sky. I believe that the church is getting ready to go. I believe that we got to hold on. And the Bible tells us to hold on to what we have. Hold on to that faith. Hold on to what God has implanted in our spirit. The devil wants to destroy it. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy it. But Jesus said, I was manifested for this purpose that I might destroy the works of the devil. Anymore, I listen now. 
Can't read that good anymore. It's hard for me to concentrate on those letters, but I listen to God's <laughs> Word Amen. a lot. Yes. Amen. And read the Word. And preach the Word. And quote the Word. Amen. I try to memorize the Word. See, you need that sword in your life. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, isn't it, sometimes? Mm -hmm. When I first got saved, Brother Scott, I'd get there and read that Bible, and all of a sudden I'd just <laughs> wake up holding the Bible. Start back again, Brother Charles. What in the world is this? Start up again. Fall out. Thank you. Just passing out. Anybody read that problem? I'm just talking to myself today, right? Hey, my son, I know a few folks in Texas did, but this is Illinois. Nobody ever had that problem, amen? Oh, yeah, that word, hallelujah, is peaceful. It'll bring peace to your mind, but also the enemy do, does not want you to graft that word into your heart because he knows that word, hallelujah, will put him to flight. Amen. See, many times you can read the word of God where God has to open someone's eyes so they can see. So all we see sometimes is to read is that vast army that's against us. But when God opens our eyes, we realize there's more for us Amen. than against us. Amen. See, as long as you're going to operate in the flesh, you're going to see in the flesh. But when you step out of the flesh and get over into the spiritual realm, you begin to see what's in the spirit. And you realize the angels of the Lord in camp about them that fear God. Amen. Those that reverence God, His angels there, thank God, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I don't care if I'm walking through the valley of death. I'm not going to fear any evil because God's got my back. We walk into and experience a greater life. Amen. Hallelujah. Some folks go out of this life fighting. Fighting, kicking, screaming. I want to grow old gracefully and just walk out. Amen. Full of faith. Amen. Glory to God. You're going to die. It's important to the man to die once then jump. You're going to die. You might as well get used to that fact. Amen. Amen. But you're going to live in Christ for an eternity. Hallelujah. You're going to a place where there's no more battling. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're going to a place where there's no more tears. God Himself wipes the tears from your eyes. Hallelujah. Oh, you need to hear me today. Thank You're God. in a great place, amen, where you hear the Word of God. No, we're not going to tell you, amen, you can get out there and just get loose like a long necked goose and do anything you want to, and God's still going to be pleased with you. That doesn't work. That's not in the Word of God. The Word of God sends you to endure hardness uh, as a good soldier. Uh, the Word of God says you to forget about these minor, these minor things in life. Uh, amen. Uh, forget about that. Take hold uh, of the spiritual realm of God uh, and walk in the Spirit. Uh, and therefore you will not, hallelujah, fulfill the lust and desires of the flesh. Amen. You can tell people it's more fleshly than godly. Yeah. I always got an excuse for the Word. Find it on Facebook all the time, don't you? Folks be shouting, man, on Facebook. And all of a sudden be cussing like a sailor. Yeah. Huh? I was in a meeting the other day with a preacher. He was there. You don't know him, so I can talk about it. <laughs> and he started cussing. Thinking to myself, whoa. Yeah. So after the meeting, I went up to him and said, look, you're a pastor. I'm a pastor. I think you need to see this pastor. He said, well, I'll come by sometime and take you out for dinner. I said, do that. Amen? Because you need some training. How in the world do you pastor to the point of retirement and ain't grown in grace? Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, I got quiet, didn't it? Come on. Folks, nobody in this church could outcuss me before I got saved. <laughs> I was fluent in profanity. <laughs> Hey man, ask my family. Oh, I could cuss you. Cuss a blue streak's what we say down south. But when I got saved, hey man, I realized the word of God said, don't let that filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey man. 
Amen. You gotta talk like somebody that's got someone in your heart, and his name is Jesus. Amen. So you tell people about the Lord, Amen. You tell them how sweet Jesus is. You tell them how much you love the Lord. Oh, I'm a man. I don't want to talk about I love Jesus. I'm a man, and I'll tell you right now, I love Jesus with all my heart, soul, mind, and body. Matthew 9, 37 and 38 says, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. You know, the military has a lot fewer members than our United States of America population. There's a lot less in the military than in the population of the United States of America. Amen. Now, we're in the military. We're in the army of God. Amen. Amen. And the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. So what do we do? Give up, give in, or get busy and win? I say we get busy and win souls for the Lord. Verse 38 says, and we've talked about it a little, Pray ye, therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. Everybody's wanting everybody else to go but themselves. Come on. Huh? Come on, you know I'm telling you, too. We all want to be. Yeah, you're a young man. Join the military, young man. Get yourself an education. Go, army, go. Amen? Yeah, yeah, get on up there and get yourself a uniform, amen. Well, what the war's going on? Well, you're going to be in it. Yeah. Amen. You may come home and get carry your duffel bag over and you may have a bag carry you back. Amen. Amen. The surprise you pay sometimes. We're living in America and our religious rights are eroding constantly and continually. And before long, you may be those that literally get arrested. You know, we're happy to see our police force come here today. But one day we may think, I don't want them guys at my church because they're coming for me. Amen? That's a reality. You don't have this freedom in other countries. I love young people. I, I really do. I love them. But, but young people, I mean, sometimes they're just dumb. <laughs> Come on. <coughs> well, we want socialism. Well, you need to go someplace where they live under socialism. Yeah, that's for sure. So you can start eating zoo animals. Yeah. And starving to death. Socialism, just look in California right now. Yeah. Look at all the homeless people Come on. in the name of socialism. Yeah. Nah, I want freedom. I want my God-given freedom. Yeah. I'm so thankful I live in America. I don't make no excuse uh, for being born here. Right. Hey, Amen. I'm telling you, uh, the, the, the government may do a lot of things, but God has blessed me with one thing. I've been born here in America. Hey, Amen. I love America. into the family of God and I will fight uh, the good fight of pain uh, and lay hold of eternal life and salvation. I'm going to fight that fight uh, and I'm going to finish this race. We see these young people sometimes come into the church the last two or three weeks and they're gone. They start off with a bang and then they fizzle out. Become a dud. You ever see those duds? I, mean, I used to deal with firecrackers that quick because I hurt too many people with them. <laughs> well, I used to deal with them all. And uh, we buy those firecrackers, light them in, get down to the very end, brother child, that's it. <laughs> Don't be dumb enough to go pick it up because it may still have a little fire. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but most times they didn't. So, brother Matt, we crack that bad dude open. Yeah. You stick a match to it, and when it starts, shh, we stomp it. Boy, right, right, amen. How many remember that? Amen. Amen. Remember that. Amen. But I'll tell you what I remember. So sometimes when these young people fizzle out, amen, just crack them open and stomp them. Back to reality. You will lose your life. Amen. To the world. When you can lose it for God and gain life eternally. There's a shortage of laborers. 
Matthew 10, 24 and 25 says, The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. You have all you need to be what the Lord has called you to be. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have all I need. I have all I need. For what the Lord has called me to be. You don't need no more. It's enough. Enough. Enough for the servant to be as the master. Enough. Can somebody praise the Lord? in action. I love to see people 
raised from the dead. I love to see people come out of wheelchairs. I love to see people move in the power and the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you like to see the power and the Spirit of God move? Well, praise the Lord. I believe it's here now, and I believe it continues to be here. God has never lost any power. Come on. Yeah. Jesus is the same Glory. yesterday, today, and forever. Would you stand to your feet? Like I said, the devil may hate you, but I love you. And I want God's best for your life. Seriously. I want to see you as an overcomer because He's made you more than conquerors in Christ. So stop that I can't and say I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Folks, you are not powerless. Jesus said I give unto you power, power. over all the power yeah. of the enemy. That's a lot of power. How much power did Jesus say you had, Brother Scott? All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Oh, you got an abundance of it. You just got to activate it. I like that what it says in the Word of God. You can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you're able to ask or think according to the power that works within you. We need that dunamis power. Amen. We need that dunamis power to explode everything out of our lives that doesn't look like Jesus. Amen? Amen. We need to get back to fasting. We need to get back to praying. We need to get back to seeking God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and body. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel God's presence today. If you're here and you don't know Jesus, you need to get to know